Welcome, and this week we look at French artist Paul Gauguin's painting of Christ in the Garden of Olives. And it was painted in 1889, and therefore you can actually see that for late 19th century painting, this feels incredibly uh, modern and incredibly contemporary. Uh, it's kept at West Palm Beach at the Norton Museum of Art. And so let's delve straight into this painting. So first of all, who was Paul Gauguin? Uh, he's actually quite a fascinating character. He was born as a son of a prominent journalist. Uh, then he first worked uh, in the marine business as a marchand marine, as they say, and then later as a stockbroker. And only after he had so those blips of different careers did he start to paint. And when he started to paint, of course, around him, there was a lot going on uh, in Paris at the time with the Impressionists. Uh, coming to the fore, like uh, the likes of Monet, Manet, uh, he even got to know Van Gogh in Arles. So he, he was there basically at a very buoyant and interesting time in Paris. He hadn't been successful in the stockbroking, nor was he successful as an artist when he started to paint. And that is even though and despite all that was going on around him in Paris at the time with the Impressionists and the Post-Impressionists, uh, the Manets, the Monets, even he got to know uh, Vincent van Gogh in Arles and yet he didn't manage to really come up with his own style and so he didn't manage to sell any of his paintings and faced with increasing poverty Gauguin left Paris for Tahiti for a couple of years and when we think now of the name Gauguin we immediately actually all of us think of those paintings those exotic paintings that he would have painted uh, in Tahiti he stayed there for a couple of years, came back to Paris and continued to live uh, a life of debauchery really and he died of syphilis in 1903 and wasn't really uh, commercially successful during his lifetime. What is of interest to us is Gauguin's ambiguous relation to religion. The choice of the subject matter is significant here given Gauguin notoriously had an ambiguous relation to religion. He was a Catholic from birth, educated in a Jesuit seminary even, and Gauguin was hostile to Catholicism. And in the late 19th century he even worked on a tract in which he exposed what he saw as the many contradictions between uh, religion and the then modern scientific age. Yet, it has to be said, like the painting here, sacred themes are recurrent in Gauguin's art. And he spent a lot of time toying with these themes. Uh, and when he was living in rural Brittany, he basically was exploring all these themes. And he was particularly fascinated by the figure of Christ, like in the current painting. So the theme of this painting, in a letter to Van Gogh, uh, Gauguin referred to this painting as Christ in the Garden of Olives, by which he meant the garden located at the foot of the Mount of Olives. And the agony in the Garden of Olives is a moment of fear, basically. And it has been a great inspiration of, for artists of all times, and the Romantics in particular. But here we're showing examples of Duccio and also of Eugène de la Croix, in which he would have found inspiration. So Gauguin's version is actually much, much more personal than those earlier examples. So let's look in detail. First, we see the foreground, the Christ figure in prayer. He's looking lonely, he's looking exhausted. When you look even at the expression of the hands, the way they've been positioned, hanging down, it all sort of adds to that melancholic feel that we get. And then in the background, you can see three silhouettes which some scholars have described as almost three figures running away from the scene, or other scholars have said that they are actually sleeping figures. But the main fact there is that the faces of these three figures in the background were purposely left undefined, so as not to draw the viewer's attention away from the main character. What else do we see? We see the bluish landscape, which I think contributes to the dramatic atmosphere of the scene. But what could look at first glance like one of the artist's many religious paintings is actually a key work in his career. 
because this is also a self-portrait of Gauguin. Yes, Christ here is actually a self-portrait of Gauguin. And how do we know? Well, if you look at the low brow, the lazy hooded eyes, the hooked nose, that, that cruel, unsmiling mouth, that's all sort of very typical of, of, of Gauguin when he paints him, himself. And he actually often uses self-portrait uh, self-portraits to be inserted in his paintings to give even more power to the paintings and Christ in the Garden of Olives was produced at a point in Gauguin's career where he f where he left and felt let down by his friends and by his critics just like he found that Jesus was let down by his disciples and the year when this was painted in 89 uh, Gauguin had just spent two months with Vincent van Gogh and he was very much hoping that the two of them would be working together but they clashed and so Gauguin went back to Paris, uh, left Vincent van Gogh sort of rather upset uh, and yeah he was in a state where he was searching, a bit of doing a bit of soul searching and, uh, and everything and I think the red hair even might signal van Gogh and invoke the tragedy of their failed artistic venture. And as well as being a fascinating depiction here of Christ, moments before his betrayal, this painting is also an insight, therefore, in Gauguin's state of mind in those few weeks of 1889. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.